Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Trix, aka Nico. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about dungeons, in particular about the dungeon class system. Ever since it was announced, I was fascinated with how people were preparing for something they couldn't wait to play. And if you're like me, you're probably wondering what exactly to prepare for, except for grinding skills, which is, for example, perfectly represented by Max's road to level 50 in every single skill. And to answer exactly that question, we're now going to take a look at the tank class. The tank, also known as a meat shield is basically the person who soaks up all the damage for other teammates to have a clear path. The idea is to distract or focus the enemy's attention on you for others to deal damage without being hit themselves. Exactly that's why 100% HP as well as 25% defense boost is again a pretty awesome fit for the class. The class is passive, protective barrier, which acts as a kind of last stand where you gain extra defense as well as absorption after falling below 50% health is for you to last even longer than you already did. The second passive taunt is really what makes up for a good tank. Taunt is basically exactly what you'd expect the tank to do, it lets monsters be more likely to be targeting you. Seismic Wave, which is the tank's active dungeon orb ability, deals a ton of damage in a wave that shoots in a straight line in the direction you're facing. The tank's ultimate, Castle of Stone, is another taunt ability, but not only that, now enemies target you and you gain immunity to all damage and knockback for 10 seconds. As a ghost or a dead player, the tank has two abilities, to stun monsters using the stun potion, as well as help out others with an absorption potion that gives teammates 200 health of absorption for 3 seconds. And since we now talked about what the class brings along, let's talk about how we actually might prepare for it. Before we go into detail though, I really quickly have to say this again, that everything that follows is going to be based off current game standards, therefore it might change in the future, therefore I obviously can't predict it at the moment, and with that said, it's also clear that I'm not going to include leaked or shown dungeon gear, as this should help you out prepare for it, and you can't really do that if it's unavailable content that I'm talking about. It's also probably a good idea to mention that I already played dungeons on the alpha server myself and I've not only done that but I've also tried to bring a lot of different heads behind the following ideas that I'm going to show you off. So like we already established, the tank is basically the heavy armed player who tries to distract the enemies and soak up all the damage. This is why preparing for this class is probably one of the most difficult things, especially skill wise. Farming, fishing and mining, which represent the skills that give you health and defense, are by far the worst or hardest skills to upgrade. But since this is the foundation for a good tank, it's pretty much required to get the numbers as high as possible within exactly those skills. Armor wise, you see that I chose the perfect tier 12 armor, as well as a superior dragon armor. The perfect armor topped with the reaper mask is pretty much explained by the fact that the perfect armor has the highest defense value within the entire game, therefore making it the perfect armor for the class. And the reaper mask, like I already mentioned in the healer class video, helps you out doubling all of your healing as well as doubling the reaper scythe's ability, which we will get into just a second. Now let's talk about pets. Unlike all the other classes, for the tanks class we have a big variety of pets, since a tank does not only exactly mean one thing. The builds, as for example shown with the ghoul pets, that would possibly be also called a bruiser build, are focused on not only tanking the incoming damage, but also expressing your strength by adding, adding damage on top of the castle you've built by health and defense. There is a lot of different pets to choose from, especially if you're talking about defense and health, the example here being the blue whale, the turtle, the baby yeti or even the elephant pet. With this said, every pet has its own weaknesses and strengths on which you will probably have to decide on your own which path you want to go for. Another idea for a bruiser build would be to focus on mana, like for example with the sheep and phoenix pet where you basically support the reaper scythe's ability to let zombies fight for you whilst you're soaking up the damage for your teammates. So as we already talked about not only in the explanation of the reaper mask but also here as an example for a reason to choose a certain pet, the reaper scythe and the tank class is probably the most iconic weapon. Having a great amount of health is easily combinable with a lot of mana and since when you're distracting the enemies by taking up all the damage, fighting isn't probably going to be the easiest thing, the reaper mask basically is the perfect solution for that. Since you get others to fight you and with that we're not talking about your teammates but your zombies that you spawn with the reaper side. 
And since we now almost completely ignored this part of the tank's equipment, as a sword I would recommend again any endgame sword that you find most attractive or most simple to get to. Since obviously you are right up in the action, but your focus is less on dealing damage rather than to soak up the damage. Alright, so since this probably was the longest episode, I'm going to try to try my best to make this summary shorter. The tank class has a lot of different paths you could choose to work towards, but all in all it's pretty easy to explain with my already used words from the beginning. You are trying to become a meat shield. And since I still want to mention this for people who have not seen the other episode, this is not including upcoming or leaked items, which is why there is bound to be changes in what's the perfect gear for a tank. But for now, this is probably going to be a pretty good preparation for dungeons, especially the lower tier floors that we've already seen in the alpha stage. Therefore, if you want to prepare, just don't forget there is very likely to be a lot of new content coming out that we might actually not even have seen on. And if what I've just shown you has helped you out and you want to take a look at the images yourself, then feel free to follow the link down below. It's on my website. I've actually tried to structure it there quite nicely. And if you have any questions, ideas, or if you want to share your opinion, then feel free to either message me on Twitter or join my Discord to do so. And if you enjoyed the video, obviously I'd really appreciate a like since it was a lot of work working on this and it would show me that you appreciated the type of content that I'm releasing right now. And if you want to stay up to date with me, feel free to subscribe, turn on the notification bell to always get notified when I'm uploading. And since this is a five part video series, you can check out the other parts that have come out yet. And since I want to keep an actual upload schedule this time, this video series is going to release a new video every other day. I hope I'll see you in the next one. And since this is basically it, thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day.